Hey everyone, I hope you all are doing good and having a wonderful day. In this video, I am going to show you one of the most unique cases of file upload bypass that I have recently encountered in a pen test engagement, right? This is very unique and I have not seen many people using this kind of, you know, methodology when they are looking for some file upload issues. But as always, before diving deep into this video, if you haven't checked out my previous video in which I have talked about how we can mitigate cross site scripting and still how we can bypass those weak mitigation then go ahead and check it out the link of the video is given in the description as well as we can see it at the right side of the screen and now with that being said let us get started okay so as you can see i have created this very small lab just for the demonstration and this is the exact method that i have followed in order to find this particular bypass okay but as always if you are really new to file upload bypass techniques and if you haven't watched my previous video in which i have shown you some really unique and interesting ways through which you can bypass you know uh, uh, this file upload restriction then go ahead and check it out everything is present in the description okay and now let's go ahead and see how it is working so you can see it says that it can it's only going to accept a png file right so what i'm going to do is i'm going to simply go ahead and upload an image file for example i'm going to just upload this png file and then i'm just going to like turn on the intercept so that we can capture the request and let's click on upload let me first verify if uh, yeah website is working let's click on upload and let's wait and you can see we have successfully got this request let's send this to repeater and we'll play with it later on and let's forward the request now okay you see the file is getting uploaded and we have the file url we can open this in a new tab and we can successfully confirm that the file has been successfully uploaded right now as what we do in usual file upload bypass is that we try to play with the uh, with the extension right so over here i'm trying to change this extension to let's say svg right because we know that if we can upload a svg file then we can straight away get a cross, cross site scripting vulnerability yeah let's click on send request and you see it says 500 internal server error which means that it is blocking the you know harmful as you can say file extensions right again let's try to play with html uh, you can see we're getting the same error which basically means that we are only and only supposed to upload a png file just to verify this let's go ahead and see if we can upload a jpeg file or not right and i need you to pay a closer look to this particular application right now you see it's jpeg i'm going to click send and you see it has given the response status 200 okay which basically means that the file has been successfully uploaded now if you go and take a look at the application it seems a little weird at first why because it is clearly saying that it only accepts png then why it has accepted a file ending with .jpg? right let's try to go ahead and scroll down and see how the file is getting uploaded so here is the file url right and if you take a very closer look even though the file name that we gave .jpeg is you know the file is uploaded but if you take a closer look the file which is saved onto the server is ending with .png right now this should tell you something this should tell you that the application is not fetching the you know extension directly from the uh, from the request right because if it was doing that then it should have given us 500 or some kind of error because the application only supposed to you know uh allowed uh, allow only png files right but still it allowed us to upload a jpeg file and it like you know converted it into png so what else they can be doing in order to verify the file type well one of the most you know interesting way for you know developers to detect the file type is to just see you know instead of just you know file names they just need to see the file content instead instead you know so what i mean by that is that maybe this application instead of you know checking the file uh, file type using the file name or maybe the content type header it is analyzing the content the content inside that file and then it is determining whether this particular file is a png file or not right just to confirm this let's try to go ahead and change this extension to you know dot html for example okay and let's try to like send the request it says 500 internal server error right now we have two things two interesting things that we have just seen if you're trying to upload html files it is straight away giving us this error right however if you're trying to upload another image file like jpeg it is allowing you to upload the file but it is checking whether the file is actually a jpeg or a png so basically it's looking into the content body for 
for some cases right and then it is validating whether it is a png file or not right so what it is doing basically is that it is checking the file content instead of the file name for certain files right and now this is exactly what i have encountered in my real you know pen test engagement for a client where i was unable to upload a file because it blocking the extension but if you you bypass that then what they are doing is they are checking the file content and they are then they are saving the name according to the file okay so what we are going to do here is we are going to do or we are going to you know let's say trick the server into believing that we are uploading a png file which is ending with dot png but we'll try to provide a different ht different content okay what i mean by that is that instead of you know let's uh, leave this to png okay and then what we'll do is maybe they are identifying the value by, uh, by looking into this first png png thing okay we'll just delete this okay like this and then we'll simply go ahead and type a simple html code h1 test h1 close right now we have we are uploading a file which is ending with dot png which means that we are uploading an actual file which is which should be valid right if the application is actually you know saving the file based on the content which is present inside it then it should look into the first line this line and they should save this file as dot html because obviously this is a html code right let's go ahead and send the request and let's see what happens so see we've got 200 okay scroll down and you can see the file has been saved as html right let's try to verify this whether the file has been saved as html or not uh, let's go to like, remove this paste it here let me just remove the slash just wait for a few seconds and you can see we are successfully getting this test value getting reflected right so we have successfully bypassed this file upload functionality now so now once we have that we can obviously go for a stored cross site scripting we can just go ahead and type maybe i am this rc equals to x on error equals to alert one and this is exactly what i did and just send the request we can simply go ahead and open this like this in a new tab here and let's go ahead and access this and you can see we have successfully got a stored cross-site scripting vulnerability in my case the application was developed on a php uh, based server right so what i basically did is that i instead of you know executing a cross-site scripting command i executed php info or you know i escalate that straightly into remote code execution by you know using a php shell and it was able to determine like i upload, uploaded the file using dot png but in the content it was a php code which was executing who am i and other sensitive commands and i was successfully able to retrieve the internal thing right the main issue which happens in this this kind of situation is that they are validating the file types right but you know when it comes to storing the data once you have the file type is verified they are checking the file content you know it happens a lot like uh, if you see many application around the internet you will see that uh, you know you like you are uploading a jpeg file but it is getting saved as png right so they are kind of you know validating uh, uh, the content using inside like what is present inside that file inside that file if it's a php png file is going to upload as png if it's a php it's going to upload as php like obviously if not properly configured right from the developer's per perspective they were thinking that if they have blocked the extension that it then it means that they are safe while they forgot that they are saving the file uh, with the extension after being validated like what is the content inside that particular file you know so they are not actually using this uh, extension they are creating their own extension the file type of uh, extension by analyzing the content inside the file right i hope you guys are able to understand this if you have any doubts if you have any issues feel free to let me know your doubts or issues in the comment section also if you are interested into how we can dive deep into reconnaissance and find some really interesting vulnerabilities straight through reconnaissance then go ahead and check my the art of web reconnaissance course it's 100 percent practical where you're going to learn everything from the basic till the advanced and at the last part of the course we are going to see 
that how just by using reconnaissance we can find some really interesting high level vulnerabilities that too on a real world target so if you are interested then go ahead and check it out the link of the course is given in the description and now with that being said keep learning keep hacking and i'll see you in the next video